Hi, I'm Eugene Starks, and welcome to the first episode of Southfield Senior Magazine. Today, we're here at the annual Senior Summit, hosted by State Senator Jeremy Moss. Hope you enjoy today. It is so good to see everyone. We are going to start the program. I'm Jeremy Moss, State Senator for this area, and I know that the people are still gathering in, still going table to table, still grabbing your snacks. You can also sign up for health screenings if you hadn't seen that form. But we're going to get the program kicked off right away because we are graced here with our Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence, who has made a quick stop here before going off to DC. So. You know me, I'm a Brenda Lawrence fan, so I got to kick it right off to her to give opening remarks, and then we will get the rest of the program going. But feel free to mill about. Don't feel like you're tied to the seat. If you want to go get snacks, if you want to go get stuff at the table, don't worry about it. As you know, bathrooms are in City Hall behind us and also in the back there. But I'm going to kick it off to our Congresswoman, Brenda Lawrence. Hello, everyone. How are you? It's so good to be home. It's good to be home in two ways. As you know, I live in Southfield, and this has been my home for over 14, 18 years. I came here every day for my place of work. I can't tell you how proud I am to be here with Jeremy Moss, my senator, and also a young man that I watched grow into his leadership role. He has been remarkable. I had hopes and dreams for him, and he surpassed them. And I think to bring us all together like this, let's give him a round of applause. So today, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what's happening in DC. As you know, I'm in, I'm in D.C. particularly because of your vote and your support, but also no group is more vocal and call me up and reach out to me more than my senior population. And I can tell you I'm sensitive to the fact that those of us, see the hair, those of us who are in our senior years have most to lose if we don't get it right. So I thank you for being engaged. I thank you most of all for voting. I thank you for contacting me and being engaged so that we can make this place a more perfect union. Askia, I see you. I haven't seen you in years. Hello, my dear. Good to see you. Um, the pandemic had a disproportionate effect on us who are over the age of 60. There's many seats that are empty because of COVID, but we survived and our government responded. I'm, I'm challenged when I'm asked, what is our federal government doing for us? And I can tell you, those of you who were still working and had to be displaced because of COVID, you receive additional funding during uh, that period for unemployment supplements you received those supplement checks that were sent out. You received free, free COVID testing and vaccinations. We know if you owned a business, you received loans and you received funds and grants to sustain you as a small business. We tend to be current for today. And when we talk about our infrastructure, nothing is more passionate to me than the quality of our water. There were those who were impacted by flooding, but we cannot turn our head to the schools that have plastic bags over their drinking fountain because the water in our schools is contaminated with lead. We know what happened in Flint, in Hamtramck right now, in other parts of this southeastern region, we are struggling with water quality. Passing that infrastructure bill is going to be the fix for that, and we should be celebrating that and thankful that we're moving in the right direction. I want you to know that Build Back Better was something that we fought very hard for, and in that was lowering the prescription drugs. 
No one is more impacted by that than us who are in our senior years, that we have medication, thank God, that will give us a quality of life and a longevity. But when it comes to the fact it becomes so expensive that we start making decisions, I know seniors who cut their required medication in half to prolong it. I know residents and seniors who do not get the medication because I'm paying my house note this month, I'll get my medication the next month. So we, we have to wake up and I hear you. And we are still pushing for that reducing for Medicare that we are able to reduce the cost of drugs. And the number one drug that we're fighting for is insulin because insulin should not be priced higher in the United States than any place else in the world because we allow these prescription companies, I'm sorry, these pharmaceutical companies to overprice the one of the highly used drugs, and that is insulin. I want you to know that I am the vice chair of appropriations. And when you say appropriations, if you want to know what a person love or what they believe in, follow the money. And appropriations is where I sit, where I sit in the room, close our, literally, they lock us in a room, and we appropriate all the federal dollars that you send to Washington. And I want you to know as the vice chair of that, we have made allocating federal funds that will address the needs of our communities a top, a top priority. We know that all ages and people with disabilities, we must listen and we must respond and take care of them. Um, we know that over $900 million for the Senior Nutrition Program and nearly $400 million for home and community-based support services. We're, we're making sure that older adults have access to meals, services, and that just like we're making sure our children don't go hungry, we have to make sure our seniors don't go hungry. And at the end of March, we pass the Affordable Insulin Act now to cap the cost of insulin to only $35 a month. I will share with you I'm diabetic. I know what those costs are. And I can tell you that this is so timely and way overdue. It is ridiculous that drug companies can be charging, making profits on the cost of our lives. No one should have to choose between their medication and we want to make sure that we continue doing the right thing. And last year I introduced the Senior Affordable Housing Act which would provide a refundable tax credit to individuals over the age of 60 to make necessary home modifications up to $30,000. Now we all know that aging in place, we have our homes, most of us will own it by the time we become seniors, but living in them for those years, I've been in my home for 35 years, it needs maintenance. And sometimes on a reduced income, it's just not affordable. And so to be able to give you a tax credit so that you will be able to reap the benefit of investing in your home so you can age in place. This will require those who meet an income base and are on fixed income to have financial freedom while they age in place. Some of the uh, improvements that are qualified are installing the support bars and ramps, no step bathing, and a lot other modifications that you would want to make. I'm also proud to support the increase of quality of life including the Medicare dental and vision and hearing. How many times have I heard from you, why isn't that included in my Medicare? And that is something that we're fighting hard for, and it's the Social Security 2021 Act. There's so much work to do. And I just want to say this to you all. I hear so often, the government is broken. All you do is fight. You don't get anything done. But I want you all to know that we are 
unfortunately in the age of technology and social media, but fighting in this country for our democracy and sometime internal fighting has been the backbone of who we are as America. If you believe in this Constitution, the Bill of Rights that we have that is envied around the world, the freedoms that we have based on an agreement, that agreement was between Democrats and Republicans. It was not written by the Democratic Party and it was not written by the Republican Party. And did they not fight over that? They actually had cane fights, physical fights. But the, this thing that we call a democracy, we have to stand up and wake up every day and fight for it and persuade and to make things happen. The breakdown that I see now is that we used to work for the common good. We would have different approaches of how we would get there, but at the end of the day, we would agree that we have a common goal. And I want to bring up gun violence. There is now the side that will not budge or have a conversation about the ability to own a gun. And then there are those who are crying and heartbroken, bearing their loved ones as a result of gun violence. There was a time when we would agree, I believe I should have my guns, I believe you should have sensible gun control laws. But at the end of the day, we want to reduce gun violence. And for some reason, we can't have that discussion because every time you start talking about providing laws, that will give sensible gun control. The voices saying, I have a right to own a gun, becomes the only thing that you hear. And I want to say this to everyone here. In America, to own a car, you must, to drive it, you must have a license. And to own one, you have to have a registration. And a car is only a thing to take you from place to place. A gun is something that only purpose is to shoot a bullet to kill something. And we cannot agree that we should have background checks. We cannot agree that you should be of an age to make mature decisions. We cannot agree that assault weapon, you do not hunt with an assault weapon. Assault weapon is only mean to kill rapid number of people in seconds. Why can't we come together on that? I'm getting on the plane in a few hours to go to Washington, and that's all going to be the top priority, is fighting for some agreement for sensible, sensible gun laws, ownership laws, not to take away your gun. We allow you to have a car if you pass a test. And you know what? If you don't follow the law, we'll take away your right to drive a car. You mean to tell me a red flag that if you're threatening people, if you're mentally ill, or you assaulted someone, threatened someone, we can't say, give me back your gun? But if you drive drunk or if you don't follow the laws, we'll say, you cannot drive a car? Something is wrong with this conversation. So I want you all to stay engaged. Please contact my office. Please talk to me. And before I leave the mic, I want you all to know that I have announced that I'm turning the page in my career. I will not be running for re-election, but I am not going to go away. I have had too much, too much experience and formed too much of a coalition of support to walk away from you all. So I will continue to use my voice. I will continue to show up at events like this. And I think Jeremy will recognize me if I show up. But you will hear from me. I will stay engaged. And I want to thank you for 30 years. The city of Southfield has supported me for 30 years. Thank you. I want you all to be blessed and know that I show up every day because I believe in one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless you. Thank you. Do you think I'm going to let Brenda Lawrence go anywhere? I'm calling on her a lot. 
Uh, so again, um, I'm sure many of you came here because of the mailer, and the mailer contains a lot of important legislation that we're working on in the state of Michigan at the state capitol. And I will go over some of that a little bit later in the program. But I want to introduce first my legislative partner, the person I lean on, the person that I work with, the person I'm so glad to call my friend and my state representative for some brief remarks, our state representative, Kyra Harris Bolden. Well, thank you, Senator Moss, and greetings to everyone. It feels good to be home. I am your state representative, Kyra Harris Bolden. Uh, I represent Michigan's 35th House District, which are the communities of Southfield, Lathrop Village, Beverly Hills, Bingham Farms, and Franklin. And it has been the absolute honor of my life to represent you in such a robust senior community as well. We have done a lot and there's still more work to do. But rest assured that myself and Senator Moss, as you can see from the turnout here, are fighting for you every single day. Uh, we have resource guides that are on the table with Senator Moss's mailer. Um, hopefully some of you have received our senior mailers in past years. Um, but what I can tell you is last year, we were able to get a million dollars in appropriations for this community. And that will go to help you Yes. We all know that infrastructure is a number one issue, and so we were so glad um, that I could work with Senator Moss and Senator Bayer uh, to uh, get that appropriation for our community that has been uh, long overdue from the state level, because you all work so hard. I know you pay your taxes, and, we de and you deserve to get some money back. We are working to close the retirement tax. Please, yes. <laughs> It's, it's been a long, hard fight, and we have a ways to go, but just know that myself and Senator Moss uh, are working really hard to make sure that you have more money in your pocket, because a lot of you are, are, are living on a fixed income, and we want to make sure that you have a robust quality of life here, wherever you, most of you are from Southfield, but particularly here in Southfield. And like I said, I'm a lifelong resident of Southfield. I know how important our senior population is, and I'm just so proud to represent you in Lansing. So just wanted to give brief remarks. Thank you so much for everything that you do, um, and have a blessed day. Now I'm very, very excited to introduce uh, a friend of mine and somebody who has been a breath of fresh air in Lansing. Our Attorney General who has returned the mission of the Attorney General's office to consumer protection. She is fighting for us every single day with tenacity, with fierceness, and she has been also making a strong focus in her office on protecting the seniors in the state of Michigan. She she has hosted these types of senior summits all throughout the state of Michigan, so there's no question she hasn't heard and isn't able to answer, and so I know that she has a good program uh, for you here today to talk about how to protect you from scams, how to protect your pocketbook, and how to protect you as you go about your everyday lives. So I want to introduce the Attorney General of the state of Michigan, Dana Nessel. Hello, Southfield. How's everybody? All right. Thank you so much, Senator Moss, for putting this together. He always has the best events. Um, but that's because he represents so many great people. So uh, thank you all for, for being here. Thanks also to uh, Kyra, Representative uh, Bolden Harris. Harris Bolden? Why do I always get that wrong? Harris Bolden? for uh, her amazing partnership. By the way, she's running for Michigan Supreme Court. Did you know that? If she wins, she will be the first African-American woman in the history of the state of Michigan to serve on the Michigan Supreme Court. So thanks for all the hard work that both of you have done on behalf of your constituents uh, and all the residents of the state of Michigan, quite honestly, because of the great work they do. Uh, do I have to stand in one place? Or nope. Okay. Uh, so, firstly, one of the things that I did when I when I started in office 
was to put together an elder abuse task force. And why do we do that? Um, well, because did you know that when I took office, there were approximately, wait for it, 73,000 acts of abuse, neglect, and economic exploitation against the seniors in our state. And I don't know about you, but I think that's 73,000 unlawful acts too many. Uh, so we put together this task force with our partners at the Michigan Supreme Court, uh, with 50 senior advocacy organizations uh, around the state of Michigan, as well as uh, bipartisan members of both the state house and state senate, and we quickly got to work. And we've done a number of different things, including putting together a uh, an elder abuse investigation form that is now used by all of law enforcement in every municipality uh, in the state of Michigan, including uh, the sheriff's departments and also the state police. But in addition to that and providing trainings on elder abuse and how to uh, see signs of it and report it, beyond that, we started passing laws uh, with our partners in the legislature. And one of the laws that I'm most proud of is called the Financial Exploitation Prevention Act, FIPA. And here's what it does. It ensures that when you have suspicious transactions on uh, a senior's bank account or some other vulnerable adult, time was, you know, you could lose all of your life savings in a single transaction. You fall victim to a scam and literally, once someone has gotten a hold of your personal information, your banking information, in one transaction, wipe out everything that you spent decades and decades trying to save for your retirement. No more, thankfully. Now, the banks and the credit unions have to train their staff on how to detect uh, these suspicious transactions. And I don't mean your regular transactions, right? Every month, uh, you pay DTE, Every month you pay your, your cable bill. Uh, every month maybe you take out 250 or $300 uh, of cash to have on hand. Nothing's going to happen. But what if all of a sudden, out of nowhere, there's a $75,000 withdrawal? And, and you mostly do your banking in person, but this is a, an electronic transaction. It's not going to go through. It's not going to go through and it's going to be reported to law enforcement and to adult protective services and they have to ensure that that's a legitimate transaction. So you might be getting a call saying, did you mean to uh, go to that uh, sports shop and, and buy a bunch of ATVs and snowmobiles? Is that you? Uh, and if it's your, you know, 92-year-old uh, Aunt Irma who's like, that was definitely not me then guess what? The money's not going to come out of the account. And so, you know, if you are planning on, on a, a larger transaction, something that's unusual for you, definitely, you know, just take the time to let your financial institution know, I'm going to be making this significant purchase. And then you won't have to worry about it being held up. But as annoying as that can be in some circumstances, still much better than you losing everything that you've worked so hard to save up over the course of so many years. And let me tell you this, of all the things that I've done in office that have been most impactful on my own life, this happened to my mom. Just, just a few weeks after the law went into effect, my mom fell for a scam and literally within just about a half hour, boom, they tried to take everything out of my parents' life savings. Uh, and so I, I feel so good about the fact that I prevented um, a homicide because honestly, if my parents had to move in with me because they had no money left, I'm not sure how that would have gone down. So we are out there preventing all kinds of crimes, honestly. Um, and that's just one thing, but it'll change the life, the life of, of, you know, an untold number of people in our state from losing everything that they worked so hard for. So how do we prevent, though, how do we prevent you from becoming a victim in the first place? That's what I'm most interested in, is making sure that you are equipped with the knowledge about how these scams work. And we'll go over some individual scams that you should be aware of, but what you really need to know is this. There's always the same ingredients over and over. The scam might change, but the ingredients to the scam remain the same. So 
let's talk about this for a minute. What is it that these scammers want to get from you? Can anybody tell me, like, what's the thing that they're interested in getting? Anybody? <laughs> There's a lot of different stuff all at once. Okay, they want, they want your purse, they want your money, and they want your personal information. Because if they have your personal information, it's not just a matter of taking money that you have, it's taking out loans or credit lines in your name as well. So every one of these scam artists is going to try to find a way to get your money or to get your personal information. Um, secondly, <laughs> sorry. Uh, secondly, the thing to know is that when you get a request where somebody is contacting you, and it could be a text message, it can be an email, it can be a, a phone call, or it could even be somebody coming to your door, it will be something that has a sense of urgency. If somebody says, oh my god, your water is about to be cut off if you don't pay this bill right away, and if you sat down and you thought to yourself, wait a minute, am I late on my water bill? Because I don't think I am. Did I get any notices that maybe my water was going to get cut off before now when I'm being told it's going to be cut off right away? I mean, take some time and think about it. I know it's nerve-wracking when someone says they're going to cut off whatever it is, your, uh, your electricity, or whether or not it's going to be your social security check that's getting cut off. It could be anything that's important to you that you really need. And if they say it's an emergency, likely it's not really an emergency. But they want you to act really quickly without even having an opportunity to think about it. Don't fall for it. Now, you can always contact my department, the Department of Michigan Attorney General. We have staff from 8.30 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, who will answer your questions. So before you do anything, if you're really concerned that maybe this is legitimate, please call us up. And sometimes they will purposely call you on the weekends, call you late on a Friday, knowing that we're not open until Monday morning. Don't fall for it. There is nothing that is so important that you have to give your personal information or you have to give money out uh, that it can't wait until Monday morning when we're open. Unusual payment requests. Always be on the lookout for this. If somebody is asking you for payment, but they're like, you know what? I want you to pay me. You owe me this money, but you have to pay me using an Amazon gift card. Is that a normal way that you pay for things? When, whether it's your electric bill uh, or whether it's you know, a doctor's bill or something? Who pays in gift cards? Nobody, right? What if they say, you need to find out how to pay me using uh, Venmo or Bitcoin? I don't even know how to use Bitcoin. I don't even know, I'm not even sure still to this day exactly what it is, right? But if they're asking you to pay from an unusual means, it is definitely a scam. And the reason they're doing that is because if you pay using a credit card, later on you can contest it, right? But if you pay using, you know, edible arrangements gift cards, once you have paid for those and sent them out, you may never get your money back. And they know that. So whenever it's a weird way to pay that isn't a way that you'd usually pay a bill, remember, it's a scam. How about this? Personal connections. When somebody says to you, hey, um, you know, my name is John, and, and uh, you know, I got your number from your grandson, Bob, uh, and I know Bob because uh, I went to Michigan State University with him, and that's how we know each other. He gave me your number. Does that mean necessarily that this person knows your grandson? No. Well, how do they know that you have a grandson named Bob who went to Michigan State University? Anybody guess how they know that about you? Social media. Facebook. Facebook. Remember, nothing in life is actually free. Feels like Facebook's free, but it's not because in exchange for you using it, they get all kinds of personal information about you. So they can find out, for instance, who are your contacts. They can look at the pictures and see who's tagged. And if you were at uh, a family reunion or, or a high school graduation or just even like a family barbecue, they can find out all the people that are tagged in that picture. So they'll learn all kinds of things about you. And that means when you get a call in the middle of the night, 
and someone says, hey, uh, it's, you know, I'm calling on behalf of your grandson. He, he's on spring break and he's in Florida and he got in some trouble and I need some money right away in order to bond him out. So send me some, you know, Amazon gift cards. What's the first thing you should do? Well, some people are saying hang up. You, you should hang up, but call your grandson. Call him. Say, are you in some trouble I should know about? Or, or call, call your son or daughter and just find out what the deal is. Um, that's a big scam that lots of people fall for. Another one would be you'll have a family member that had an accident and they're in the ER, but they don't have their medical insurance with them and you need some sort of a down payment for them to do emergency surgery. Well, of course, when you hear that, you're going to want to help out your family member as quickly as possible, but slow down, take your time, and before you do anything like that, make sure that you contact that family member uh, and you reach out and say, is there really a problem before you, you know, provide any financial information at all whatsoever. It's very, very important that you do so. So these are all just sort of basic ingredients. The, the scams will come and go and they'll change depending on what's going on. For instance, a lot of scams uh, are weather-related scams, right? Do you remember last summer how bad it was when we had all of these storms and all of this flooding and lots of us had damage to our homes, right? And that's when you see, for instance, scams that are related to that. Maybe they're related to you having a, a vehicle that's damaged because it got caught in the floods. Or maybe when there were high winds, lots of people lost uh, you know, tiling on their roof. Well, do what you would do in any other set of circumstances where there was not an emergency, do your homework, right? So if it's a contractor, what if that contractor says to you, Hey, I got a great deal for you. I'm going to charge you half price of what this is usually uh, the amount you usually pay to retile your roof, but you got to pay it in all cash. What do you do if somebody says that to you? It's probably a scam, right? If somebody will only take cash, what kind of a business only takes cash nowadays? So remember the things that you have to do if it's any kind of a home contracting situation. First of all, don't pay in cash if you could possibly help it. Don't pay it all at once. Pay a third down, pay half when it's about half done, and then pay the last third, not until everything is all completed in any kind of home project. Because trust me, once you've paid all that money, you might never see those folks again, right? Get everything in writing. Everything in writing every single time so you know exactly what's expected. Uh, and make sure you look to see if people are licensed, right? So many things, whether you're a roofer, whether you're a plumber, whether you're a carpenter, you should be licensed and you can look it up on LARA, the Licensing and Regulatory Agency. And if they're not licensed, probably not a good idea to use them. Some other scams that I want to go through that are really common scams that we're seeing nowadays. Well, let me say this. Does anybody here know what spoofing is? few people? All right. So when you get a call uh, on your cell phone or on your landline and a number pops up and it says it's your bank, say you go to, well, ma'am, what, what bank do you use? No, don't tell me. Don't tell, don't tell me what bank you use. Nobody could hear that. Don't give out your financial information, even to the attorney general. Uh, but when you get a call and it's on your cell phone, and it says it's a number, and it, say, it says it's your bank. Whatever the branch is that you use for that particular bank, is that, is that your bank calling you? I mean, maybe. It's possible it's your bank, but the problem is because of something known as spoofing, you don't know that. Anybody, any one of us in this room right now could make a phone call to anybody else in this room and have it appear as though it's coming from a particular number and it not, not necessarily is it really coming from that number. And I know you're probably thinking, why isn't this illegal? Well, I wish it was illegal, but unfortunately the debt collectors have a lot of influence in Washington, D.C., so it's not. So here's what you do. If somebody calls you from a number 
And it looks like it's a legitimate number. And they're calling to say, hey, it's your bank. We had a problem with your account. Looks like somebody got into your, your banking account. And we're trying to verify your information. That's what they'll say. Don't provide your information. Instead, here's what you do. You say, you know what? Who's this? Barbara at, um, you know, at, at Chase Bank? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a call back. Hold on a minute. You hang up independently look up the number of your bank, call back and say, hey, you know, this is Dana Nessel calling. I'm calling for Barbara. Is there, is there a problem with my account? And chances are it might be somebody saying, no, there's no problem with your account at all. Uh, and somebody was just trying to spoof and scam you. So make sure anybody calls, no matter who it's from, right? If it's somebody that you did not originally reach out to, and they're calling you and they want to verify your inf personal information, or they want your credit card number, or they want your social security number, or anything like that, you say, I understand what the issue is. Hold on. I'm going to call back. And you call back. The other thing I want to make you aware of is something called, not spoofing, but this one is smishing. Does anybody know what smishing is? I don't know who names these, by the way. It's not me. I just get them from the uh, FCC and the FTC. But smishing is when you get one of those random text messages. And it'll say on there, hey, you want a, you know, you want a free prize. Click here to claim your prize. What should you do if you get smished? <laughs> Delete. That's right. Don't respond to it. Don't click on that link. Do you know what that link does when you click on it? It can install mal malware onto your device and steal everything in your phone or everything on your laptop or your iPad. Just delete it. Don't click on it at all. Nothing good is going to come your way via smishing. Jeremy, how much more time do we have? Two minutes, three. I can't put my name on the record in two minutes. You know that. All right. I'm going to try to wrap up with some other helpful hints. How many people here are still getting robocalls? Everybody, okay? Listen, we have an anti-calling, robocalling task force at the AG's office, and we are going after those major robocallers. But I'm going to give everybody a tip here today on what you can do to ensure that you never get robocallers to bother you ever again. Every single one of your cell phones, uh, you know, you have a carrier, right? Maybe it's AT&T, maybe it's Verizon, maybe it's T-Mobile or Sprint or whatever the combination of that is now. Every single provider has an app that can be downloaded. And when you download that app, it's a robocaller blocker. And what that means is this. It means that the only time you'll get calls that'll directly ring your phone is if it's already somebody in your contacts. If not, it will go directly, without you even hearing it, to your voicemail. And guess what? If it's important, what would those folks do when they're trying to call? They're going to leave you a message, right? And then when they leave you a message, if it's important, you just call them back. But 90% of those calls that are coming in and you don't know the number, they're robocalls, they're illegal, and they're trying to scam you. That's the only reason you're receiving that call. So what you should do is, whoever your provider is, if you don't know how to download the app on your own, just go right into, go into the AT&T store uh, or call them up on the phone and say, how do I download my app? If you're like me, uh, you know, you call your kids who are more tech savvy and say, can you help me with this? And, and you download it. And I'm telling you, it is a life changer. Because you know how Pavlovian we are, right? The second we hear our phone go off, boom. We just jump for it because it might be an emergency. And if you're getting robocalls all day long, it's very disruptive to your life. This way, that call will only come into you if it's somebody already in your contact list. If not, boom, it'll go right to your voicemail. You don't even know about it until you pick up your phone and you see that there's a voicemail waiting for you. And most of the time, guess what? They ain't leaving any voicemail because it's illegal and they're not leaving something uh, for you to call back. So it will not disrupt your life at all. And it really makes a difference. I hope that everybody here has picked up uh, cards where it provides information. One more thing, Jeremy, I swear to God, and then I'm out of here. Uh, we set up a special unit in my department called MITS, the Michigan IT Support 
uh, well, identity theft support system. And here's what it does. Any of you who have already been like my mom and clicked on that link you shouldn't have clicked on, you know, because you weren't thinking at the time, and your identity now has been compromised and you know that you fell for a scam, sometimes worse than the money that you lost on that scam is that now your personal information is floating around out there on the dark web and you don't know what to do about it. You call us at that number, we are going to assign a caseworker to you who will literally walk you through the process from beginning to end to re-establish your identity. Um, and so please take one of our cards uh, and make sure if you ever have a situation where somebody scams you, somebody takes advantage of you, somebody steals your personal information or your money, that's what the attorney general is there to do, right? All these big corporations, they can afford to pay $500, $600 an hour to represent them. I'm the one who represents all of you, though. And if you have that kind of problem, please call us. We will do everything in our power that we possibly can to help you to get your money back, to get your identity back, uh, and to go after whoever has scammed you. So, Jeremy, thank you so much for allowing me to monopolize your, uh, your summit. Thank you for the great work you do on behalf of all the residents of Southfield and for allowing me to be here. Everybody, be safe, be careful, and have a wonderful summer. Thank you. Thank you. That was a lot of great information. I want to add one thing that I am working directly with the Attorney General on is price gouging. We are working hand in hand together to strengthen Michigan's price gouging law. We're all getting squeezed. I go to the same gas stations as you. I go to the same grocery stores as you. I feel it too. So be on the lookout for our partnership on that because we are trying to go after those bad actors who are trying to take advantage of multiple crises to squeeze vulnerable people like us in paying for basic necessities. So. As many of you probably first met me, I was a Southfield City Councilman uh, here in the city of Southfield. And it's been my pleasure for the last four years to represent 11 vibrant communities in Southern Oakland County. I am a Southfield resident. And one of the reasons why I hold this event every year, even though we've been kind of disrupted for the last two years, but prior to that, we held this every year, is because Southfield is a community for all ages. We want to make sure our senior community can retire with financial security, with dignity, have the resources for access to health care, and have fun things to do. So Southfield is a community for all ages, which I'm proud to call my home, and I know many of you are as well. So I want to recognize some of our city officials who are here. We will first recognize our city council members who are here and stop by, Councilman Jason Hoskins. I also noted earlier that Councilman Lloyd Cruz was here, but I think he had to take off. And I, I don't know if any of our other council members uh, attended or made it to this event, but I do want to give the opportunity to our mayor to give some remarks uh, and welcome you to the city and talk a little bit about what's being done here in City Hall. So our mayor, Ken Siver. <laughs> well, I was here. All right, when Ken comes here, we'll bring him up, but we'll go to the next part of the program because I see our next speaker is ready uh, to come up here. And we have a new public health officer here in Oakland County. As you know, many of the things that I do in Lansing direct funding to our county. And our county health department, you don't need me to tell you, during this pandemic has demonstrated what is in their purview, how they protect the public health. And our new county public health officer has hit the ground running and is a superstar. And I'm so excited that she's here for our program today. Let's welcome Kalandra Green. Thank you, Senator Moss. And it's a pleasure to be here today with all of you representing the Oakland County Health Division. Let me start out by saying that Oakland County seniors represent 86% of vaccinated individuals. 
That is amazing numbers. Our seniors showed up and they showed out. They came with cars full of people. Their neighbors really showed a sense of community and protecting the health of themselves and others. So, so proud uh, of your vaccination rates. Thank you so much. I really do want to talk about the need for Oakland County to get really infused in senior services. For over 30 years, Oakland County has worked with the Senior Advisory County uh, a Committee. And that committee is a representative from each of our districts that work directly with our Board of Commissioners. They bring information, news, gaps in our community to the commissioners who then charge the county with making sure that we have programs, services, and resources to meet the needs of all of our seniors in our community. And that is our charge. There's one thing I really want to talk about today, and you may think that this really has nothing to do with seniors, but I want to put a plug in for infant mortality. The reason I'm speaking to you about it today is because a lot of us in this room are raising our grandkids and our great-grandkids. And I want you to know that Oakland County provides services for low poverty level mothers that are on WIC. We provide home visitation nursing to pregnant moms and their babies. This is a free service. And we know that African American babies die at a three times higher rate than any other race. And so if you have children, grandchildren that are pregnant and need the support of nurses, please contact the health department. Please visit my table and call our 1-800 number to get these services provided for your family. Let's protect our children, our infants, and our older adults. At Oakland County, our goal is to look at the lifespan. That is from pregnancy all the way through older age. We have a duty and we are committed to making sure that our services are in line with the needs of our community. In terms of our senior services, please take advantage of our market days that gives discounts to seniors to shop for fresh fruits and vegetables. We have dental services to assist seniors with dentures and the cost of dentures. There is a whole host of services that I could talk to you about today, but if you did not visit that black table and pick up one of those magnets, call our number. We can put you in connection with any services that you need. And whatever services that we don't currently offer, that's what that Senior Advisory Council is doing. They are bringing the gaps to our attention. So thank you so much for having me. I've enjoyed meeting each of you at the tables. Enjoy life. Tomorrow is not promised to us, but let's work together to do everything that we can to keep ourselves, our neighbors, and our communities as safe as possible. Thank you very much. All right, our mayor, Ken, do you want to come up and say a few words? Ken Siver, mayor of Southfield. He was out working. That's why he's, he's walked in a little bit <laughs> late. Here you go, Ken. That didn't go to work. All right. All right. Now I'm, I'm together. How are you? Good to see everybody. Um, I always look forward to the Senator's uh, Senior Summit. He um, always gets out a, a, a good crowd, and I'm sure there's lots of um, very helpful information. So um, things are going well in the city. Um, we, we do have a uh, newsletter. If you, you don't subscribe to the Senior Scribe, 
Um, I brought a stack of them and we can pass them out. Uh, maybe uh, Councilman Hoskins can help me. Um, with, uh, you know, we, we do a lot in, in the city of Southfield for our, our senior population. So we have great classes going on in the Parks and Rec brochure, as well as um, the farm is still open, the Mary Thompson farm, if uh, anybody wants a, a plot over there. Um, and we're doing gardening classes this year as well. Uh, but I did want to take a, mo a moment to um, uh, talk to you about Juneteenth. Uh, we are doing an eight-day celebration starting on uh, June 15th with jazz and blues at the, uh, the library at 6.30. At 5.30, we'll do a Juneteenth flag raising out front. And then um, we have a whole series of events on Thursday, Friday. Saturday, I invite you to come to the Mayor's Juneteenth Walk at 10 a.m. Um, right out front, we walk for about two and a half miles uh, through, over to the Red Pole Park and, and back. And then on uh, Sunday, the AKA sorority will be doing a virtual program. Um, I don't have the connection to it yet. They're still working on the details. Um, City Hall is closed on, uh, and that's Sunday the 19th. Uh, City Hall will be closed on uh, Monday in observance of the holiday. And then we're ending up on the 22nd with a, um, everybody know the show uh, that, um, uh, now I'm blanking on the name, um, the, uh, where the, where the company's doing, it's a pitch event. Um, the, Shark Tank, sorry, I couldn't think of it fast enough. Um, anyhow, Shark Tank, uh, a senior moment. Um, <laughs> uh, we're doing, over at the Accelerator at Lawrence Tech, we're doing um, a pitch event for small businesses, and it uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, you can come out and watch if you'd like. Uh, we'll be sending out the complete calendar. There are flyers available over on the table of uh, all the things that are happening on Saturday from uh, noon to nine. Uh, just very quickly, we have a black uh, cowboy, Elsie Caudwell, um, at one. Reenactors uh, from the uh, um, Southfield Historical Society, Larry Lee, and back in the day band from seven to nine. Um, Tuskegee Airmen at 2.30. The Southfield Public Library has a whole number of activities. And we have the art exhibit uh, in the lobby uh, here as well as uh, in, the, in the library. So um, we do a big thing with Juneteenth um, and we're inviting you all to come along. I hope you'll join me for the walk on Saturday uh, the 18th at 10 a.m. right out front. And it's a rain or shine event. So if, it's, if the weather's not great, we'll get out our umbrellas, all right? Thank you. We have a few more presentations, but I just want to remind folks, if you need to stretch your legs, go walk around the tables. They're doing health screenings in the back. If you had signed up for that, make sure you don't miss that. I think there's a couple of slots still open. And we have refreshments over here. Restrooms are behind me in Southfield City Hall. Uh, and I really want to right now give my appreciation and my thanks to Priority Health. Priority Health has been a great sponsor and partner of the event this year. And give them a round of applause. Uh, and to that end, I want to invite Ron Crowfoot up here to give a few remarks as well. Thanks, Ron. Thank you, Jeremy. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My goodness, what a what a nice crowd of people, and what an impressive lineup. I feel like a a little uh, a little fish here. Uh, there's some pretty uh, significant folks that you've heard to. I'm Ron Crowfoot, as was mentioned. I'm from Priority Health. Who knows, who's ever heard of the company called Priority Health? Raise your hand. Okay, well, quite a few, okay. Not, we're, a, we're a health insurance company, a health insurance company, Priority Health. Um, guess, how me, guess which company had the most people in Michigan select for their Medicare Advantage plan? Anybody wanna guess? 
Priority Health. More people in Michigan choose Priority Health Medicare Advantage plans than any other in the, in the whole state of Michigan. We are a nonprofit health insurance company. We, uh, we are owned by a company called Spectrum Health. Has anybody heard of Spectrum Health? They're on the west side of the state. Has anybody heard of Beaumont Health? Okay, Spectrum and Beaumont have done what recently? They have merged, Beaumont and Spectrum. Right now we're known as BHSH. That's kind of a strange logo, right, or name. There's gonna be a new name rolled out. It'll probably be exciting. We hope it will be exciting. So uh, health, Priority Health is the health insurance company that's owned by that health system. Spectrum Health and Beaumont Health. Look for the new name. I'm sure there'll be a lot of press about that coming up soon. So one thing I wanna tell you is that Priority Health does Medicare Advantage, which I mentioned to you before. And more people in the state pick Medicare Advantage plans than anything else. It's over 50% now the people pick a Medicare Advantage plan. We have a bunch of plans out there. If you haven't heard about them, a lot of them have a premium of per month of what? Zero premium. And uh, all of our plans come with built-in dental, with preventative dental benefits, with no copay. And we use the Delta Dental Network. It's a very nice program built into your Medicare Advantage plan. Our plans come with also a uh, vision program where you have your preventative vision exam every, every year uh, for zero copay and some other benefits that go with that through a company called iMed. We also have in our plans hearing aids. If you want a hearing exam every year and you need hearing aids, we have those built into our plans as well. Something else I want to mention to you before I finish is that we're very committed to this community. We're going to be much more involved. That's why we're here today. Uh, we are proud to be part of this event and we thank you for the invitation again, Jeremy. Our goal is to remove barriers to health and wellness through corporate sponsorships and philanthropy. We are involved in a number of philanthropic endeavors that include uh, maternal and infant health and behavioral health initiatives. One of the things that we're doing, I wonder if any of you have seen this, we have popped up a number of free outdoor fitness courts, free outdoor fitness courts. We're planning 20 of these around the area, 20 of these free fitness wellness courts. Right now we have uh, we have popped them up and they're going in Highland Park, Madison Heights, Redford, and Marysville. I just want to say again, thanks for letting us be a part of this event. We have a booth back there, a table back there, way back on the left. If you want more information about Priority Health and our Medicare plans and all that sort of thing, please feel free to stop by if you haven't already. And as Jeremy said, uh, if you want to get that... Um, a uh, little basic screen, health screening, please do that too. Sometimes, you know, it's the first little warning sign we get that something might not be going just right and we can deal with it right away. So thank you very much. Jeremy, I'm all set. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Somebody just said they like our colors green and white, so I, don't, I won't go anywhere with that. I'm an MSU grad. I like green and white too. <laughs> If we could just cut some of the noise around the tables just a little bit because we have two more presentations and I think they're actually going to utilize the screens here so there can be a visual element to it as well. So I want to introduce uh, Jenny Jarvis from the Area Agency on Aging. Thank you, Senator Moss. Are we gonna have a visual? Do I need to manage that? I don't need one if it's not ready to go. All right, no slides today, but that's all right. How is so filled today? Everyone great? Yeah. Latest update, no rain yet. Looks like it's gonna hold off until we're out of here, so we'll stay dry. So Area Agency on Aging, thank you to everyone who stopped by our booth today. Uh, make some noise or raise your hands. How many people have heard of the Area Agency on Aging? Woo! That is over 50% or more of the crowd. And I think when most people think of Area Agency on Aging 1B, they think of in-home services to support seniors. We are a non- Oh my goodness. Who 
Whew, that hurt my ears, I apologize. <laughs> I'll stand way over here. <laughs> so you think of we're a nonprofit organization. We actually receive state and federal funding to help seniors remain living as long as possible in their homes, safely and independently. We're one of a national network. So a few people stopped by and said, well, so-and-so lives in Wayne County or they live in you know, another part of Wayne County or somewhere else in the state. There's an area agency on aging in every part of the United States that is available to help a senior or a family member caring for a senior find out about programs and services available in the community to keep that older adult living in the community. And we love that word, older adult senior. Okay, this legislation that created area agencies passed the government in 1965 called the Older Americans Act. And they said, hey, a senior is going to be, how old do you think a senior is? 62? 65, 55, well they, they, they say 60 is a new 40, but back in 1965 they thought 60 is a senior. So programs that you hear about through the Area Agency on Aging are really when we talk about age, you have to be 60 to access the programs. Or a family member who could be younger than 60 caring for someone 60 years of age or older. And we're a nonprofit. We really are a trusted resource. Our staff, when you call our 1 800 number, any area agency you call, will help guide and help you understand what programs you might be eligible for, somebody you're caring for might be eligible for. And it's not all in home care programs, it could be accessing lower cost dental, it could be you know, finding some affordable prescriptions. It could be if you're caring for someone who needs depends and they're getting very expensive, are there programs that can help you find affordable um, services like depends? So it's more than just somebody coming into your home to help you out. Some of the other things we do are we have a lot of programs, health and wellness classes for seniors. So hey, we also want to keep you healthy and living in your home. So we have some programs like Matter of Balance. I know we had pre-COVID a lot of Matter of Balance classes in Southfield. Maybe some of you took one. And now that we're moving out of the pandemic, we're starting to do more classes again in the community. And we're certainly doing them virtually. Not as much fun, but still a safe option if you want to join us on a Zoom and do one of our health and wellness classes. So we have Matter of Balance. We have a diabetes class to help people with living with type 2 diabetes. Chronic pain management, people living with chronic pain. How can you learn to cope with that, better manage it? And these are free workshops that are available for seniors. If you're a family member, I had a few people stop by that are family caregivers caring for an older loved one. And you know what, that's a very rewarding but often very stressful journey that many of us take um, throughout the course of our life. And we have programs that are there to help family members. We have a free workshop, Powerful Tools for Caregivers, that's six weeks long. You can learn how to learn more about caregiving, talk to other people in the same situation, and that helps guide and navigate you through your caregiving journey. Uh, we have Caregiver Coaching, which is a great program that matches you as a caregiver with a trained volunteer who's just there to act as a one-on-one -on -one support. Sometimes caregiving, when it's stressful, it's nice to have somebody else just to call and talk with and that's what that program can do. Some people picked up a my ride too. Transportation. We live in Michigan. We live in near Detroit. I mean the automobile is very essential across our community and there comes a time when sometimes people are simply no longer able to drive or maybe they just never did drive which is okay too but we have a program that helps link seniors or adults with disabilities with affordable accessible transportation there are certainly you can call Lyft but Lyft doesn't necessarily walk up to your door walk you out your door get you your wheelchair into a vehicle take you out of the wheel you know out of the vehicle up to the next door so there are programs there are transportation services can do that can do door to door so that's what we can help link people up to so, you know, we have a MAP program. If you're, oh my goodness, open enrollment. I know we just heard from Priority Health who talked about Medicare, and Medicare is a great service. It's a great program, but boy, can it be confusing sometimes. Or you get your billing statement and you're going, what was that? I, is that a scam? Is that a fraud? Or it's open enrollment. It's like, do I really like that Part D plan? Maybe there's a better one out there that's going to save me some money. We have a program. We have volunteer counselors who are on bias 
that help you understand what your options are during open enrollment. Maybe you need plan A and B serves you, saves you more money than the plan you're on. Or hey, you know what, we can talk with you about that um, billing statement. We can help you understand what that might be. If it is a scam or a fraud, we can help you report it to the federal government. The MAP program, also called SHIP nationally, is one of the key ways that Medicare detects fraud in the local community. So reporting fraud back to Medicare, to Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services is so important because that really helps save Medicare money. I could talk forever probably about the, the programs and services that um, area agencies on aging provide, but we're really the first step first place to call if you're a senior, you might start to need a little help, just wonder what might be out there, questions about Medicare, a family member providing care, you know, call us, we'll help get you started, help you understand what's available in your local community to help you stay living in your local community. So thank you very much. So now we have uh, someone, a group that's been with us, I think every senior summit. Uh, we have Lauren and Melissa from the Disability Network of Eastern Michigan. Lauren, come on up. Lauren comes to all my things too. So she doesn't just show up once a year, which is fantastic. She comes to all of our coffee hours. She's helpful, it's fantastic, and we appreciate all your support. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lauren Baker. I am the Public Policy and Outreach Specialist for the Disability Network Eastern Michigan. We are formally known as Disability Network Oakland and Macomb, but back in September, we've acquired five additional counties. We now cover the Blue Water area. So in the thumb, we now cover, in addition to Oakland and Macomb, we have covers Huron, Lapeer, Sanilac, St. Clair, and Tuscola counties. But we cover all of Oakland County. We have an office in Troy. And today I'm gonna to tell you some of the services that our nonprofit agency offers. I am so happy to be invited back here today by Senator Moss. I joined the Disability Network back in 2012. And I remember in 2014 when then Representative Moss had his first coffee hour. And I attended that at the Southfield Library. And I love to come to the city of Southfield to share with all of you the services that we offer, not just for senior citizens, but we serve people of all ages and all disabilities. Our mission statement is that we are committed to promoting a inclusion for all by breaking down barriers and opening paths toward independence and personal choice through resources, advocacy, information, support, and education. We offer five core services, advocacy, information and referral, independent living skills training, transition services, and peer support. Some of the services that we offer at our agency, during open enrollment for Medicaid and Medicare, we have a MAP program, Medicare Medicaid Assistance Program. You can come to our office or we could come meet with you where it's more convenient and help you during the process of selecting your different plans, the Medicare drug plans. We have an assistive technology program. If you're in need of some devices to help you see better, if you have some uh, mobility issues, we can do an assessment to help you with those assistive technology devices. We also do a lot of work with veterans. We have a veterans program where we receive authorizations from the VA to go to veterans homes to help them learn about technology and other services that they may need. Also, in addition to the programs that may be more geared for seniors, we offer a adaptive recreation program. Oop, my mic keeps going out. Um, this is a new program, Oop, adapt, adaptive recreation. So at our table back there, we have programs that are offered virtually. We have a, a cooking class, yoga, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other adaptive classes, but we have a packet with all of the information. In addition to the adaptive rec programs, we are also going to be offering um, program, oh gosh, my mic keeps going out, sorry guys. Um, some of the different programs that we offer in addition to assistive technology, veterans, is a program that my coworker is going to be talking about, Melissa Mahach, and here she is about some of her programs she offers. I'm gonna come over here because I've heard there's a lot of feedback on that section. 
So my name is Melissa Mahaj. One of the things that I do at Disability Network Eastern Michigan is I go around and I talk about um, abuse in older adult communities. It's everywhere. Um, and I kind of take what our Attorney General Dana Nessel was talking about in terms of scams, but break it down into, okay, this is what happens. This is why we fall for it, because it's fear-based, that kind of thing. I also end up working in the peer support program heavily as well. Um, so we have lots of different kinds. I know we have some really amazing speakers. Um, I know Senator Moss is just dying to come back up here. So I'm going <laughs> to, no, I could talk all day about these things. Please come see us. Please reach out if you have any questions. Um, really, that's what our goal is, is just to be available for folks. So Lauren, do you have anything else you want to say? Just thank you, Senator Moss, and we are really happy to be here, and we want to be a resource for everyone, so please give us a call if we can help you. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, did you guys get a lot of good information here today? Awesome. So that wraps up the formal part of the program. I would be remiss if I didn't thank my office staff for helping to coordinate and to plan it. That's Sarah, Brooke, and Bethany. Thank you so much. The tables will stick around for a little bit. I think the refreshments might be all out. If you had your health screening sign up, it's in the back. But thank you so much for your attentiveness. attentiveness. Uh, I'm here on the clock, always working here for the community. Uh, I'll stick around too if you have any questions. Uh, but I have resources too from my office at that table over there. Uh, and uh, whatever I can do to be of service to you, I'm here. So thank you very much for attending the Senior Summit. That's the end of today's program. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. I'm Eugene Starks, looking forward to seeing you the next time.